Hi guys, Overarch here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to manipulate the blood web in Dead by Daylight. So many people don't really understand how the blood web works, especially when you're first starting out. It's not a very intuitive mechanic. There are two ways to manipulate the blood, blood web. The first is when you want more time in the blood web, say when you get a good web and want to get as much of it as possible. The second is when you want to progress quickly through the blood web, you can actually make it faster and cost less blood points. You would do this when you say had a, bl a bad blood web or when you're just trying to level up that person. So first we need to understand how the blood web works. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you now through the wonders of Microsoft Paint. The first thing that you need to understand is that the blood web will start at perks and it doesn't start until you take a number of nodes or take a perk. So let's say that I take this perk over here, the entity will then begin by taking that perk over there. Next, it will move inward, so it works its way towards the inside of the blood web. It cannot backtrack and moves inward until it can't go any further. If the inside path is blocked, it'll instead go towards the outside and it prefers perks of a higher level. So, let's say that I take this perk, it will then go there, and then there, then afterwards it will prioritize this perk over, say, this one or this one, as it's the highest uh, rarity perk on the out outermost layer of the blood web. Next, it's going to go to the uncommon perk right there, and then towards the inside one there. So how can you manipulate this? Well, there's a couple ways of doing it. If you have a good web and want to spend as much time as it with you can, you should avoid taking a perk right off the bat. So I could take with this blood web, I could take if I take that perk I, or that node, I could take a perk within two turns, but it might be three or four turns before the entity will spawn. So I want this perk right here on the left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and then I'm going to start taking other things. So I might take this node and taking this node and then the entity spawns. So I will then take the perk before the entity can. So that basically stops the entity from or delays the entity from spawning for several nodes, giving you more time with the blood web. Now, another thing you could do is, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> If you're trying to spend as much time as possible with the blood web, don't let the entity take intersections. So what happens when the entity take, takes intersections is that it blocks off everything that's attached to there as well if you didn't have any other way of getting to it. So for example, so the entity takes there, and then it takes there. Next up is this one right here. Now if the entity takes this one, it's also going to block off that one because there's no other way to reach it. So therefore, the entity with that one move has blocked off two paths. Uh, another, so let's say the blood web was organized like that and the entity took that node, it would no longer block off this one as well, just as an example. So don't let the entity take intersections. Now, to progress more quickly through a blood web, say if it's a bad blood web, we're just going to do the exact opposite. We're going to let the entity take intersections like that and that, and that's going to you know, help it. In fewer turns, it's going to block off the blood web. And in fact, if it takes a really important intersection, it can block off four or five different nodes like that just instantly. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take a perk as soon as possible. So we would take there and then there. And that means that the entity spawns earlier. We're basically just doing the opposite. We're taking a perk ASAP and we're letting it have intersections. So keep in mind here, if you're wanting to just progress through it quickly, uh, the cheaper, the, le uh, the lower rarity a node is, the cheaper it is. So if you have a choice between taking a useless yellow like that and a useless gray, you should take the useless gray because it's going to end up costing you less. Also, if you're hunting for specific perks, you should always take perks, even if it's not the one you want, because that reduces the total number of perks.
let's say there's five perks you don't have. One, two, three, four, and five. So the game will pick one of these five whenever it generates a perk on the blood web. But if you took this perk previously, in a previous blood web, now you have a one in four chance of getting the perk you want instead of a one in five. All right, so, as always, guys, I hope you've learned a little bit from this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I hope I've explained things kind of well. And as always, if you are looking for more Dead by Daylight guides and tips, stick around on the channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye.